well, it's it's so great to be here with um, I'm I'm here with uh, Charlotte and Kieran of the Irish Rep, um, and uh, you know it's a huge honor uh, to be here. We we did this um, physically and in person when we when we could uh, on uh, on the stage of Irish Rep in December um, for the open house, and it was really fun and uh, just a, a great conversation we had. Um, Individually, first, like, how did each of you begin your careers in theater? Charlotte, if you wanted to go first. Well, I went to I uh, I went to Washington University in St. Louis, and uh, I was uh, naive and didn't know really what I wanted to do with my life. But I uh, I joined a Thursus, a group called Thursus, and did a play. It was Hippolytus, and I was a member of the chorus. I stood against a wall and put my arm up and memorized the entire damn thing and uh, decided from that that uh, theater was uh, what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And so, uh, so I switched to a, 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 another major and, and got my degree and, and went down to the Oslo um, uh, Theater Company in Florida, where I was in eight plays a season, eight, 16, 24 plays I did down there, and uh, got a lot of experience and decided I wanted to go to New York. And, and I, first I went to Hartford and did a lot of plays under the direction of Paul Widener there. And then I, uh, I was hired, uh, somebody saw me in a play there and I was hired to do a play in New York and I went to New York and the rest, and, and it what was, was a Broadway, play? the Broadway play that I was hired for. It was, uh, it was uh, The Great God Brown directed by Harold Prince. Oh my and God. That's how I started. Wow, that's, that's really incredible. Um, and then you just walked into an audition room and met Hal Prince and I, I, I didn't audition. He, he saw me in, in, a, in a play in Hartford and called me and said, in a year's time, in one year's time, I'm starting a theater company. I'd like you to be a part of it. Uh, the first time he said, the first time uh, that call happened, I hung up on him because I thought it was somebody in, in Hartford playing a joke on me. But they called back and <laughs> they said, please don't hang up. Please don't hang up. It really is Harold Prince. So uh, I went to New York with a job. And on and, and, uh, Broadway, on Broadway. Wow. That's how I did my first experience there. And wow. that's from there, from there. Yeah, so, okay, so you, and then Kieran, how did you, how did you start with, uh, with theater, this business? Um, I, well, I, I was one of those things I came to, to America, you know, trying to get away from all things Irish. Uh, <laughs> and I, I arrived here and went to a, you know, where people go, I went to a bar. But the bar happened to be across the road from a theater. And uh, on the night of a, a technical rehearsal, of, um, a term that I wasn't in the least bit familiar with at the time, but somebody didn't show up in a production of Brian Friel's Freedom of the City. And there was a, t a tiny role of an officer giving evidence in court. And they, they saw me at the bar, one of the stage manager or somebody there said, hey, would you, would, why don't you come over and just step in for, for, for the, <laughs> the And I went, I went over and I thought, I thought that's what acting was because I, I was um, giving evidence in court so I didn't need to even learn my lines. I could just read from my notes as a police officer. And uh, so I was fooled <laughs> into, a, into a world of theater thinking that I never had to learn a line. <laughs> and, uh, the lights came up. The guy never came back. I was. I did the role, and um, and you've been starring uh, ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, how uh, how did you and Charlotte first meet? Bring well, <laughs> there was a there was a um, s somewhere um, s somewhere in the midst of all that in the in the eighties. <laughs> we were cast in a play together by Hugh Leonard called Summer that was directed by the wonderful Brian Murray. And, uh, and that's, that's when I first met Charlotte, where I was supposed to be also giving her dialect notes, none of which she took. <laughs> she, she, she accepted none of it. Uh, and I, I should have known by then that she was never ever going to listen to me. <laughs> oh man, well that's, so then you, so you're in this play together, and then Charlotte, do you want to talk about how you developed that into what we now know as the Irish Repertory Theatre? 
Well, I, 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 we, we may differ on this, but I, I think Kieran came one time uh, uh, to me and chatting and so forth and said, why don't we do a play together, an Irish play together? Would you like to do that? And I said, oh, of course. He said, I, I'll produce it and you can direct it. And so that's, we did um, for our sins because uh, we really didn't know what we were doing, especially me, but we did the, the um, what did we do, Kieran? The, the Plow and the Stars by Sean O'Casey. The Plow and the Stars the by Sean O'Casey. The Plow and the Stars. The hardest uh, Irish play in, in the history of Ireland. That was 1988. And I'm going to differ with Charlotte. On, on Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 actually, uh, we actually planned a whole, uh, to, to have a full season uh, in, in, our, in, our first, in our first get around. That's so what he said. Had, we, really? Well, we, we had rented a theatre, which was the, uh, the 18th Street Playhouse, no longer in existence. But so it is, in, 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 our, in our first season was The Plow and the Stars was the first one. The second one was a play uh, called I Do Not Like the Dr. Fell. The, the third one, we did a Yates program called uh, Yates' a Celebration. And Joe Papp invited us to go to the public theatre to do it as a sort of a benefit performance for us. And it was one of the big, you know, a big deal for us. It was in our first season and on the very first night uh, or, or on the night of the, when we did the Yates, Joe Papp walked out and said, he said, when a new theater company starts in New York City, people should pay attention. When it's an Irish theater company that starts, there should be great celebrations in the streets. Welcome to the Irish Repertory Theatre. And that was Joe Papp, you know, who was, uh, who was a, sort of a, a big hero of ours. Legend, for, yeah. For doing that. And then the next play was A Whistle in the Dark, which moved off Broadway. And Charlotte, do you have a favorite uh, from those days before you... Whistle in the Dark, period. Whistle in the Dark? Okay. Mine too. Really? Yeah. Um, and then, so what happened next? Did you, how did you come to get a, a theatre... Uh, an actual theater space um, to to call home. Before we go there, we should say that like the, the one of the biggest things that happened actually happened the following year after that. Uh, so, so why don't you tell about Hal and Grandchild? Oh, well, uh, um, I, I had known Mr. Prince for quite some time through mutual friends, but um, one day Mr. Prince called me and said. I've written, uh, I've written a Sean O'Casey piece called Grandchild of Kings. Would your theater like to do it? And um, I again thought somebody was playing a joke on me, but he was serious. He wanted to direct it and, and we, we were over the moon about it. And we said, of course we said yes. And so Harold Prince, directed Grandchild of Kings for the Irish Repertory Theater and talk about starting off again with a bang. We should say what it is that Grandchild of King was his adaptation of the autobiographies of Sean O'Casey. Of Sean O'Casey. Wow, it's me and, and Kieran, how, uh, what was it like getting directed by, well actually either of you, what, what was it like getting directed by Hal Prince? For me, it was the clearest, most precise, most exciting direction I've ever had. Uh, and Kieran? Well, it was it was just an extraordinary experience to but for for all of our company. There was eighteen in the company and four musicians. Eugene Lee, the designer, sort of built the city of Dublin within this place, the Theatre for the New City, where we had it. So it was kind of a black box. You know, so Hal Prince comes to a black box and he creates the most magical stage pictures where everything is just happening all over the place, here, there, and everywhere. And 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 he, you know, we felt so privileged that he 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 chose our company to do his work. Wow, that that's amazing. Yeah, no, and I, I know um, I know you guys are you know the the planned gala is to honor Hal Prince as well, which um. Is, uh, is really fantastic. So, I mean- He was a great supporter, great supporter. He loved, loved uh, Irish uh, literature and Irish drama. And it was right, right, you know, on the nose what he liked. Oh, and he clearly loved the Irish rep. So that's, that's really, really amazing. Um, so just, so what year did you decide, did you move into the 22nd Street space? Cause you moved around from 18th Street to 42nd Street to, Theater for New City, and, and what time? At what point did you say, 
I, 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 I must tell you that. I, Kieran will tell you what year it was. But Kieran, uh, Mr. O'Reilly had taken a trip around the world on his motorcycle. And um, while he was gone, I, I, we had decided that we had to have a place of our own or, or we were going to have to, we couldn't go on because it was very difficult. And while he was gone, in that hot summer while he was gone, he's gone for almost a year, I traipsed around, I traced down every, every empty space on every, all over Manhattan, all over town and sweated it out and, and <laughs> really worked hard and found nothing. It was very discouraging, very discouraging. And Kieran came back after his round, smart round the world trip. And I think he saw something in a newspaper or something the second day he was back. And, and that's where we are today. <laughs> That's incredible. How, how did you do it, Kieran? Uh, so, so what Charlotte just she needed to really just to get a copy of the New York Times, and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, just, I, I think she, maybe she was looking at the in the wrong page for listings. You know, and, <laughs> and this place was a chemical warehouse that had been closed for um, for a number of years, I think, and uh, the family owned the whole building, and they were like this really sweet kind people they were like not a, at all like you'd normally associate with new york real estate or landlords they're people actually kind of love theater as well so they were into the idea of uh of so they gave us um it, it, as part of the lease which we got a 10 or 12 year lease i forget which now and we um uh, they gave us six months free to fix it up so uh that's what that's what we had so that's the time that we knew we had. So, but be, by the time we signed the lease, we did not have an architectural plan. <laughs> we most certainly did not have a capital campaign plan, or or, uh, or really or really the money to to go forward. So we just started, and it was under the premise of you know if if we build it, they will come. <laughs> and they did. And they did. People wow. came and they helped out enormously. I mean, huge. Huge wow. labor costs that were done voluntarily, and uh, and we and by by August, we were in rehearsals for the first show. Wow, wow. Okay, I mean that, that that's an amazing kind of meteoric sort of uh, like timeline. That's very quick. Um, did speaking of kind of design of it, did you that graphic design the um, the the green uh, window um how did you did you know what i'm talking about how did you come up with with that well i uh, i was at charlotte's apartment one evening and i drew out what the uh what the top of the georgian door uh was and put and 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 the idea was that uh the irish repertory theater would be within the glass of the georgian door and the door itself would have a poster of whatever the show next show was so we'd always use this door with the window and you just stick a different poster onto the door each time and that was the concept uh i don't That's think we but did you forgot that. to say that it was on a napkin oh yeah well i did <laughs> oh i still have it actually uh, That's like you still have the napkin i do yeah do, do you have a frame for it do you keep it it's actually in a frame i don't know if i have it here or it's down at the office. Uh, if, sure. if it's here, should I go and run and see if I can find it? Yeah, you should. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so Charlotte, while he's, while he's gone. Um, I'll tell you the truth now while he's oh, yeah, gone. Tell me the truth, tell me the truth. Oh, no, go ahead, go, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever feel like, cause you know, all of a sudden you're, uh, you know, you've been doing all, all these plays that really weren't Irish for, many years and you know you've you know nominated for two tonys and with some of the best in the business acting with them and uh did you ever feel as a director that you were closing yourself off by yes I, yes absolutely i miss acting although i'd be too afraid to do it now i'd be afraid, afraid i couldn't remember the lines but um yes I, I i miss it i missed it then i still miss it and um but i i get a lot of it done by um by directing and and asking people asking stuff of people that I know they can do because I could do it 
so I don't mind asking for them to make a leap or make a jump yeah. or, or, or go beyond their comfort zone because I know they can do it because I can do it or I you could do it. have the, the ethos that you, yes. you know, have that behind you. Yeah. Kieran, did you, did you find it? Well, I, I, I didn't, but I did find the, uh, the, the very first, uh, the, um, this there is it the, is. Oh, that, wow. that, that, this is not obviously the napkin, but this is the, uh, the, the, uh, the logo. That's the logo. And that's the very first one. That's the card for the play for the plow and the stars. Wow. September 15th, October 9th. Yeah. Three weeks run. Wow. That's amazing. I'm going to, I'll open it. This is the, um, the, the this was the, uh, this, this, this was the back of the, um, of the card. Wow. Huh. Oh yeah, there it is. Thursday to Sunday. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. Thursday to Sunday. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, producing director Kieran O'Reilly, you cut Charlotte off there, I think. <laughs> Charlotte, wasn't on it. Charlotte wasn't on it in the beginning. <laughs> That's okay. you Charlotte, became, Charlotte, you became the artistic director, I think, in the second year. And what do you do as a producing director, Kieran? <laughs> I, I follow Charlotte's orders. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, it's it, we, we we honestly do um, share so many duties. Uh, uh, of things, you know, I, I do probably have a lot more to do with the business end of it, you know, with contracts and, and, and that, and that part of it. But, um, I, 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 I feel it's, it's, you know, that we, we, we share so many things, duties, and it doesn't, and, and the lines just blur right. all the time. I mean, you know, from, from, you know, picking programming and picking shows, we, we just talk together all the time and come to common consensus. I wanted to just quickly flag the fact that, you know, my experience is that artists want to work at the Irish Rep again and again. And, um, you know, I, I just wanted to ask, like, what do you have a secret for how you get them to do that? How you get them to want to keep coming back or? Give them those juicy roles. Sure. And, and <laughs> put them in, give them a juicy role and give them an expert uh, designer and, and put them in beautiful clothes. Who wouldn't want to do that? I mean, you don't, you don't make a fortune, but it's artistically satisfying, I think. What would you like the, it's a tough question, but what would you like the legacy of the Irish rep to be? What do you think that the role of it in New York and in the nation really like, what would you want it to be remembered for? Um, I, I think we, I think we began, uh, we invented, we started, we envisioned and achieved an important theater in, in, for, for, in, a, in a tough field uh, in New York City, in, in Manhattan and New York City and in this country. I, I think we started something new and achieved it and did it well. And I, I expect it uh, to continue uh, long after we're gone, I hope. Yeah. I'd say, you know, we, we began on, on our mission in, on the first day was, was to say that we want to perform Irish and Irish American works performed professionally with a native understanding. And I hope that, that that's something that we did do, that we brought a native understanding to Irish literature and to, and that we, introduced new works as well as, you know, introducing old works because <laughs> a lot of them that are, you know, are, are people have never heard of, you know, and never seen. And, uh, and people say, God, where was that play? And so I hope that if, if, if there's a legacy to be had, that, that, that's, that, that, that we put the work first uh, pretty much all the time and that we, honored the artists who came and worked with us and which answers the other question you ask why do people want to come back i think they come back because they feel they have an artistic home and that's what we wanted i think that's it and uh it's it's a hard time right now when you know when you have such an open door you know open door friendly attitude towards theater and art making and everything um and now you you know can't open your doors physically, but um, I love what you guys are doing from 
from a virtual standpoint. It's really amazing. So um, I, I'm, it's been an honor to be here talking to you guys from afar. Um, I hope that we can all work together. Um, Very again. soon. Yeah, yeah, for sure.